Good morning my dear children this is P Vasanth Kumar social teacher from DAV high school SDSTPS AP Genco Naltur Today we are going to learn the new chapter hydrosphere the part 1 learning objectives by the end of the chapter you will be able to describe hydrosphere illustrate the hydrological cycle in detail before entering into the chapter we should know the introduction of the chapter our planet earth is unique among the other celestial bodies its surface is covered 3/4 by water we utilize only 1% of the water available on the earth remaining 97% is salty sea water and 2% is frozen in glaciers and polar ice caps clearly we know these two informations have you ever thought why water in the seas and oceans never dry up even though the earth is covered 3/4 with water only 1% of the water is useful for human beings do you think this 1% is sufficient for all the living things to meet their requirements in order to know the answers let us learn about the hydrological cycle in detail my dear children let us learn the introduction of hydrosphere hydrology is a broad science that utilizes information from a wide range of other sciences and integrates them to quantify the movement of water the hydrosphere is referred to as water sphere which includes all the earth's water found in streams lakes the soil ground water and in the air earth has abundance of water which is a unique feature that separates it from others in the solar system it about 71% of the earth is covered with water hence it appears as blue in the photograph taken from the moon so we call the earth as blue planet now let us go through the topic hydrological cycle the movement of water on earth surface and through the atmosphere is known as the hydrological cycle the hydrologic cycle is a conceptual model that describes the storage and movement of water between the biosphere atmosphere lithosphere and hydrosphere in hydrological cycle water is circulated in the following three forms liquid solid gaseous the hydrological cycle can be mathematically expressed as rf is equal to ro plus et where rf is rainfall ro is runoff ET is evapotranspiration the hydrologic or water cycle is a continuous cycle where water evaporates travel into the air and becomes part of a cloud falls down to the earth as precipitation and then evaporates again there are six stages or processes involved in the water cycle now let us go through six stages of hydrological cycle evaporation transportation condensation precipitation runoff ground water now let us learn each stages in detail evaporation 
Evaporation occurs when the physical state of water is changed from the liquid state to gaseous state. The process by which water is transformed into gaseous state is called evaporation. Evaporation occurs when radiant energy from the sun heats water causing the water molecules to become so active that some of them rise into the atmosphere as vapor. Land, lakes, rivers and oceans send water vapor into the air. Transpiration is the evaporation of water through minute pores or stomata present on the leaves of the plants. Now let us learn transportation. Transportation in the water cycle refers to the movement of water particularly from over the ocean to our land in the form of clouds. Clouds travel from one place to another mainly due to upper air circulation, surface based circulation like land and sea breeze. Water move underground through the soil, eventually returning to the ocean. In the air, it moves in the form of water vapor. Now let us learn condensation. Condensation is the process by which water vapor in the air is changed into liquid. Condensation is a crucial to the water cycle because it is a responsible for the formation of clouds. Water vapor cools down and get condensed into tiny droplets and clouds. When the transition from gaseous space to solid phase occurs directly, then it is called deposition. Now let us learn precipitation. Precipitation is water released from clouds in the form of rain, freezing rain, sleet, snow or hail when the clouds meet cool air over the land. It is the primary connection in the water cycle that provides for the delivery of atmospheric water to the earth, most precipitation falls as rain. Precipitation creates runoff that travel over the ground surface filling lakes and rivers. Precipitation is defined as any liquid or solid aqueous deposit that forms in a saturated atmosphere. Now let us learn runoff. Runoff is a precipitation that does not get absorbed into the soil nor evaporate and therefore makes its way from the ground surface into places that collect water. It is the primary agent in the soil erosion by water. Much of the water that returns to the earth as precipitation runs off the surface of the land and flows down hills into streams, rivers, ponds and lakes. Now let us learn groundwater. One of the important phases of water cycle is groundwater. Groundwater is the part of the precipitation that seeps down through the soil until it reaches rock material that is saturated with water. Under the ground, water is stored in the space between rock particles. In a few special cases, groundwater even flows upward in artesian wells. The speed at which the groundwater flows is much slower than that of the surface runoff. For the session, we will discuss in this chapter, identify the different sources of water, 
interpret the salinity of ocean. Thank you, my dear children.